I can honestly say this is the best modern collection that I've ever seen. Would you take a check for 70,000 for everything right now? For 120, we can do a check. <laughs> I'm not opposed to that. Hey, what's up? Hey, sorry to call you so late. Um, I'm at the hospital right now with Marcel and he's in a, he's in a ton of pain. I'm not exactly sure what's up. But I wanted to call and let you know in case something happens in the morning. I, I don't I don't know when I'm going to be back, but I just wanted to give you a heads up. We're probably going to have to push the collection back tomorrow until they figure out what's going on with Marcel. All right, so long night last night with Marcel. He ended up getting sick. So I go down to the lobby. And he's healed over in pain, and he said that he's having a gallbladder issue. And by 2 a.m., I'm back at the room, and he's still at the hospital. He's done. He's done for the day. They sent him back home about 5 a.m. after giving him some medicine, some morphine, and uh, he's gonna be napping, but, but I don't wanna force the issue because he, he obviously is not doing so well. How you doing? All right, I'm tired, man. A long night, huh? Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm gonna make it right now. You guys, you guys head out. Okay, how long you sleep? You wanna, are you done for the day or do you wanna wait? Check back I, later. I feel okay. Okay. I feel okay, but I didn't sleep all night. I was at the hospital the whole night. I didn't get back until like half an hour, 45 minutes ago. Okay. And they gave me some morphine and stuff. I'm still, I need to get some sleep, bro. Cool cards, but no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. Sorry you're going through this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make it up. Let me, let me just get some sleep and then I'll fly. Okay. All right, brother. Let's see. Uh, I don't think the morphine's worn off yet. <laughs> All right, so we're here in Los Gatos, California, just south of San Jose, southwest of San Jose. Uh, and we're getting ready to go see an amazing collection. It's one of these rare collections that was curated in a very unique way. A gentleman named Yaakov collects numbered cards but they have to be the first number in the entire run so like one of 10 one of 20. he invited us out a few months ago and we finally made it but we just had one of the best breakfasts we've ever had on the road at los gatos cafe some cinnamon rolls that were out of this world if you're ever in this area check out los gatos let's go check out some cards So I'm gonna text Marcel and see if he can find a way to get here after lunch. He's gonna to try to nap off everything that happened last night. Sounds like he's gonna recover, uh, but he needs to get up here. This is the type of collection that Marcel needs to be at. I'm not normally jealous of weather, but this weather is unbelievably perfect. Yako. Hey, welcome, welcome. Meet you. Thanks for having us, man. Oh, come on, come on in. Thank you. So this is uh, the Shanahan family's uh, bearded dragon. So our, our neighbor goes to Calvary uh, Baptist Church School or wow. something like that. And the Shanahans were, uh, went there and their contributors over there. And so I guess after their kids were kind of done with the bearded dragon, they donated to uh, the classroom pet. So Shanahan, are you talking? 49ers. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So a lot of 49ers uh, live in our area, like okay. guys I mentioned. Yeah, it's kind of cool to every now and then see some pro athletes running around. Is it okay, being a Kansas City guy, is it okay for me to be in this area? Well, we won't announce it to people like actively, <laughs> but. I'm gonna see a lot of cards I'm probably gonna remember today, but I absolutely am gonna remember that lizard. So uh, what's the story okay. with the cards? Okay, you got them all laid out here. So I'll, I'll explain to you how I laid stuff out. Okay. These are the number ones that I'm interested in working with you guys on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this, oops, sorry, Rem. This is my PC that I'm keeping, okay? Yeah. These are the number ones basically that I'm keeping. This is kind of one of my favorite pieces right here. So I got this from a gentleman who I believe the original story was he found this um, Polaroid okay. in a card in a flea market or something like, in a book in a flea market or something. He went and met um, Lou Whitaker at a show 
and uh, he, I have pictures of him signing it. And the story is that this was taken in his mother's house in Virginia the night he was told he was being drafted by the Detroit Tigers. They made about two dozen of these, and he signed them sweetness and gave them out to his family and friends who were there that night. When he brought this to him, it was about 2014 when he got signed by him. He said he hadn't seen one since about 1983. Oh yeah. my goodness. So I've, I've, I've had this since about 2015 or 2016. Wow. Yeah, he was, uh, he was sweating, waiting for the call. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, you can see it there. <laughs> So tell me about, I mean, you have a you have a crazy story. This is the first time a lot of people are gonna see some of the stuff you have today, but what's the, the history of you getting into so, the hobby? When I was uh, in first grade, 1986, um, I am special like needs kind of situation with like education and stuff like that. So reading in English did not come very easy to me, bottom line. Okay. Um, so I had a tutor and she'd help me read. And we'd read books like, Curious George and very basic <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> Nothing serious, you know, I, I was really struggling. And so every time we finish a book, she would bring me down a little stack of baseball cards. And it turned out that she had two younger brothers who were like 19, 20, 21 ish. And this was from their collection. And so over the course of that year, I probably ended up with like 250, 300 cards, you know, whatever it was from her bring down. And the last day um, I came to see her, she's like, I got something for you. She said, I got, oh boy. I said, okay, you know. And she comes downstairs with um, a shopping bag full of baseball cards and like two or three albums. And she's like, I spoke to my brothers. They have no interest in their card collection. I mean, this is 1986, okay? They have no interest in their card collection. Here you go. I'm a, just turned seven years old. She drops on me what must have been at least 5,000 or 6,000 cards in a shopping bag and they filled and a couple albums. The card the range from 1977 to 1984. So I had like a page or two of Ricky Henderson rookies. I had all the big guys like Sandberg and Boggs and Ripken rookies. And so that's how it kind of got me started. Okay. Um, and you then were seven. I was seven, yeah. So I, okay. I basically walked into like an insane collection at seven. Like you can never <laughs> get, you have to understand, um, my mother knew nothing about sports, but yeah. sports. my father was like a chemistry nerd, right? My parents started taking me to shows by the time I was nine years old, they dropped me off and let me go run inside and do my thing. And I come back with money and more cards and different stuff. I was learning how to wheel and deal. Now I went to an Orthodox Jewish day school, all boys. Okay. okay and we're talking, you know, late eighties, early nineties, peak of the industry, I, you know, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and so I literally, no one had access to card shows. Yeah. Uh, the first kid. So I had this double locker system, right? And so down with all my books and crap. And then up top was my baseball cards. And I had packs, individual cards, and then I had supplies. And I'd open up during lunchtime and recess and uh, sell stuff. The head rabbi, named Rabbi Gold, so if your son's watching with a big collector, you'll know this. Um, <laughs> he called me down to the principal's office one day when he heard how much I was selling. And I would say that I was grossing about three to 400 a week. Okay. In, in starting about fourth, fifth grade, right? And so in middle of sixth grade, he called me to the office and he says, uh, Yaakov, he goes, we have a rule in the school that you can't be selling anything except for the canteen, which was sanctioned by the school for the senior class trip and yearbook, right? So the canteen would sell pizza and candy sure. and sodas, right? And so I turned to the rabbi, I said, Rabbi, we're not in competition. I'm selling sports cards, they're selling food. He looked at me like, okay, that's pretty smart. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you sell in school, but you have to pay a tithing, 10%, called tzedakah, right? Okay. To the school. So that was the deal, and that went all the way through about eighth grade. I love Yako's story, right? He just, he's talking through his, his childhood and pulling cards out of his locker and selling them in the school. Uh, the rabbi's coming to him saying, dude, you can't be doing this, man. We got, we got the cafeteria compete with you. What an incredible story of just grinding it out at an early age and look at where he is now. One of the early cards when I got back into the hobby was this one right Montana here. Montana Rookie. Um, and so I bought that, that was an early purchase for me. And so then I kind of got back into it in six-ish, 2007, my company started really taking off. Okay. Um, and so I had more disposable income and I started like really getting into it. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna start building player runs again and doing all sorts of stuff. And at that point, like things were like dirt cheap in the hobby. I mean, it was crazy and I was doing vintage tall boy basketball cards, although I was into it, but nobody in 2006 or seven cared about those. Like now they're kind of becoming popular, sure. but I had like the Oscar Robinson and Elgin Baylor and all the other players from those years, Jerry West, I'm paying like nothing. I had an Oscar Robinson, I only paid $50 for it. Oh, you know, it was crazy, it was like nuts. And so like you see like, for instance, like this kind of stuff, like I was always, I always felt pull holes when I was 
uh, was an undervalued player. And so I've stacked these gold cards of him, right? And oh, the most man. I paid for any of these all-star cups, $75. The most I paid for any of these is $40 above there. So any of these are like $40, $350. So this whole box is stacked with pool holes, right? You made some good buys, man. Yeah. So I've made some, I've had some fun buys in my time. Um, so at what point did you shift your mindset to now I got to focus on scarcity? Because uh, scarcity is a big part of your collection here. I kind of was always drawn to things that have number one on them. And I said the hunt for that is the part that I want to be okay. about, right? Obviously, I like to collect them and show them off. But the hunt and the negotiation for most people, I think, is really uh, that initial high in the, in the collecting part of it, right? Yeah. And so what I learned was on eBay how to use my filters very well. Hmm. And so it literally would feed me hits all day. People started wanting to feed me cards. You know, they were like, oh, I have this one, I have that one. So, yeah. And it was just organically how it went. And I ended up having a kind of a following a little bit. People would, um, especially in my like heyday when I was really going hard, I'd have probably no less than four to five people a day hit me up. That's kind of what got me going. I wanted to have something fresh, something new, uh, a new hunt, a new challenge. I had a, a little debate with one of my friends who had been in the industry also, and he said, is it more special to have like a one of 499 or like a one of five? Yeah. Right? Most people would say that one out of five, but then like because of what you're trying to collect, maybe the one of 499 is more scarce because there's yeah. 398 other ones that you can totally. possibly go after, yeah. right? So we've been here an hour. I've already started to see a lot of cards in his personal collection, cards that he's not gonna sell. And I haven't even touched the seven to 15 boxes over there that are for sale as a part of this deal today. I can't wait to start digging into those. I paid like so cheap for that. One of five Brady Red Refractor. Yeah. yeah. So how did you kind of decide what was staying versus what was potentially going for sale was it did um, you just cut it off at players or some players certain cards i wanted you know um but i also wanted to leave stuff that i thought you know would generate you know some buzz with when you're promoting stuff you know yeah um, but i think you see there's definitely a good amount of stuff that yeah. people will be like all about mattingly mini framed auto yeah one of 25 i'm speechless like i don't think i've ever seen a modern collection this insane Every handful of cards I pull up, I'm just in shock. My jaw is literally just dropping every card. One of 10, one of five, one of 20 of some of the best players of all time. Unbelievable collection so far. There's so many players in here that are just studs. You got Trouts, you got the Bregmans. And also people would also give me, send me cards. Okay. People, so a lot of times people send me stuff, they're not gonna send me big ticket dollar cards, obviously, yeah. right? But I used to, for a period of time, for about four years, get probably two to three times a month a card in the mail from somebody for free saying, I pulled this or I saw this in a dollar case and thought about you and yeah. there you go. Okay, that's pretty sweet. A one of five. Maddox Mini. Ginter. So I was always into minis, so I have a yeah. bunch of minis. A couple big monsters One of in 25. There to, <laughs> to figure out what we're gonna do. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Shot. Uh, just a little PSA 10, you know. Gold refractor, nothing, nothing too crazy. Just some random small stuff. You got some good Chris Bryant's. Got a handful. Man, I am so bummed that Marcel is not here today. This is the type of collection, and Yakov is the type of guy that Marcel would be a perfect fit for. What do you start putting your money into? I mean, hobbies, well, some okay, stuff. Okay, so maybe, maybe so. Okay, so I want to flip into between one and four cards from this kind of stuff um, with my goal, and okay. just. Ensure that and put that in a safety deposit box for the kids. The rest of it is me to still have fun with, you know, over years. I still collect. I mean, right now in the mail, I have like vintage on its way to me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like I'm a collector. I love cardboard. I love the hobby. Yeah. Um, but every few years, you have to kind of change it up a little bit, keep yeah. it interesting. Um, and like I said, I, I, the modern stuff, I still love it. I just have, I'm weary, so I'm sitting back a little bit more. I'm yeah. kind of more. Strategically, maybe I'll buy a few things, like some of the runs I want to complete. I'll, you know, go after stuff of that. But I have a lot of, like, player vintage stuff and Hall of Fame stuff I'd really like to accomplish over the next maybe 10 to 12 years. Yeah. Um, and so we'll t that'll take me into my, like, mid to late 50s. And then we'll see how uh, how things are going then, yeah. where the market's at. Um, but my goal is to not quite have as many cards as, okay. as I have, be a little bit more concise and then hopefully you know go into retirement around 65 to 70 years old and then start to sell cards and maybe do some card shows again I, but i think when i'm older i think that will be yeah. like kind of my like 
my thing, you know? I'll just go back and do that. I'll do some online stuff and- I could see you um, doing some shows. Just a heads up, stay until after the credits for a special announcement. In the meantime, you may as well hit the like button. So this is a 13. One of, yeah, one of five. I have, a, I have a couple 2013s and a couple 2014s. Those are awesome. Floating around. Okay, this card will always have a special sentimental value to me. This is a second year Stan Usual. So I bought this card mm -hmm. at the last show I went to before I diagnosed with cancer in 2017. So I went to a show in the Cow Palace, which is South San Francisco at the big venue. I was already feeling pretty sick with early May. And uh, I went to there and I was trying to cough on people. And because I had part of my symptoms was I have coughing a lot. And I found uh, this dealer and I really wanted to buy a rookie of Stan Usual, but okay. it was still a little bit out of my price range. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy a raw, a raw one, honestly. Mm. But, um, so this is the last card I bought for many, many months because I got really sick. I Shortly thereafter, I went into the hospital hmm. and uh, basically went on like a six, seven month battle with cancer from that point. And I was in a very hardcore collector's group. Okay, but these guys are all fanaticals, right? And they knew about me and my Oriole collection, in particular, one of the pretty substantial, you'll see it when you look through it. And so I basically couldn't buy when I was sick initially for, the, for hmm. most of it. I didn't have money and you know, you got, whatever and so i wasn't posting really much and i wasn't like really active in the group and people kind of saw that and so without my knowledge um one of the one of the main guys in the group contacted my wife and plotted this uh, little situation for me there's a special package that was sent for you he's a little tired that yesterday was treatment i am uh hoping everyone is tuned in that needs to be tuned in at this point sorry for our missy room He's been feeling pretty uh, nauseous today. It's a day after treatment, so this is definitely up number one. uplifting. I know where these came from. <laughs> Got me right here, guys. Wow. I can't believe this. The one of 15. I can't believe you guys put up the money for this. That's nuts. Silver Frame Museum collection, doing one of 15 to go up the one of 10 I just bought. Wow. Thank you. You guys really just made my whole day and my whole weekend. And I really appreciate it. A lot. Yesterday was uh, treatment six of 12 for me. So I'll be done in three more months and hopefully everything will continue going relatively smoothly. And I'll be back uh, back to work and back to normal life soon. So that's when my wife kind of learned like about the community of collectors mm. that you can like, you know, run into. I don't know if everybody had that, you know, an experience like that. And I think that was kind of a special situation, obviously, but it just kind of goes to show where uh, people are at in the industry with their mind and their hearts, you know? And yeah, how did you fight through it? What was the, that, that's um, gonna be that the lows that you were going through, that had to be insane. You know, yeah, so my youngest daughter was uh, about seven months old when I was diagnosed, and my, okay. oldest, da my oldest daughter literally turned four years old uh, the day I had this surgery on this side of my neck. So, you know, my children are pretty young, and um, I think when you have children, it changes their perspective quite on life and how you kind of look at things, you know? And so it wasn't really about me surviving for my sake, but more about me surviving for their sake. And mm. I just couldn't fathom my children, you know, growing up, uh, not knowing me, because they were so young. Because honestly, if I had unfortunately passed from the situation, I would, my kids might've been, you know, one in four, one in five years old, it mm. just didn't work out. I mean, I was really ill, you know, I couldn't work or do anything. I lost 50 pounds in like maybe two months and I was just, in bad, bad shape, obviously. I want to be there for my wife and stuff like that too, but I think the kids uh, help parents draw a lot of strength in tough situations. We've waited almost two months to announce this amazing new feature for the Chasing Cardboard community. As you know, we sell in all kinds of different ways. We sell on eBay, we sell on whatnot, we sell direct. But one thing that we haven't solved for is finding a way for the community to sell to each other. Well, that problem has been solved starting today. Announcing the Chasing Cardboard Marketplace, which is available for all of you to buy and sell with each other. Not only are you gonna find very cool items specific to the Chasing Cardboard episodes, you're gonna find items 
from all of you that watch Chasing Cardboard. We have a great platform backing us that provides buyer protection, cool technology, and even interactive features for you to communicate with each other. If you click the link below, you're going to get a $5 credit where you can use to spin with each other right now. We look forward to seeing you there. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty monster one. Like, it's so hard to even put a value on a card like that. I would think it's probably 200 maybe. Think so? I think so. I think that would be... I mean, like, I don't even know how to price that David Ortiz, right? Like, if you look at the back, it's such a rare number. It's, the, it's one out of five, like, whatever, 99. 99. Yeah. I mean, it's just a hard one to figure out. You know, I'm going through these cards right now, and I, I just can't believe the type of scarcity here. Like, I, I know how hard it is to get some of these cards, right? These red refractors, the gold refractors, the blue refractors, and the autos on top of it. And to get them one of, it really does add this level of specialness for each card. I'm just in shock. I really am. These are kind of cool. These are retro refractors of Gary Sheffield. And this is like one of 15 and one of 25 versions. Just cool. Oh, here's that Kangaroo Jr. I told you about. Um, this is the uh, ultimate collection. One of seven ninety nine. I go. mean, I think to the right person, this might be ten or fifteen dollars. I don't know. You know, other than unhappy about that. You know, he's not here today. But Marcel Bilac, who yeah. is the largest Beltre collector in the world. I have a few, I think, interesting. In my relics, I have a bunch of like one of five, one of ten relics. I'm pretty sure of his. Mm, I'm gonna snap a picture of that. I told you he's. He's, he's at the hotel, yeah, the hotel. recovering from emergency. I mean, look, if he wants to get an Uber over here and come and join the fun at any point, you know, uh, by all means. That's the plan. So tell me about your selling in the past. That's a I mean, it still, still occurs. I mean, I still sell. I mean, you where, know. where do you sell mostly? Facebook. So, Strictly for Facebook. Uh, yeah, I can't deal with eBay because their fees and the taxes are just ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and so I do mostly fire sales, and then I sell some like the card in the boxes I showed you over there. I'll do yeah. some of that kind of stuff. So you talk a lot about Facebook communities, which I have never really tapped into. Yeah. What's the secret to kind of finding those? Um, so oftentimes they're kind of referred through friends because I've been around uh, for so long. They'll say, yo, they're a really great group. You should check it out or I'll get invited. But oftentimes I'll look to make sure like the moderators of the group actually are on top of the, mo actually on top of the group because okay. people can be like post bad stuff inside there or be scammers and you just want to like really watch out for some of that. Um, and so there are some scammer pages which also call out people. There's a few of those. People know me at this point, so when they see me selling, they're not even like, oh, we need vouchers for Yako. They're like, it's just, yeah. I'm out there. You got a Goldschmidt, real one, red, one of 68. That one's just sweet. One of five, Ortiz and Yastrzemski. Yeah, it's a nice one. For a Boston fan, that's gonna be a, a nice card. Not everybody's I mean, into the minis, but I mean, you know, if you like the minis, it's- it's one of five of Mike Trout, color match in the Angels jersey. Yeah. Seeger, one of 25. Orange is 25 back then yeah, still, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that numbered? I think it's one of 99. Yeah, only one of 99. <laughs> Harper, one of five. Schwarber, I love the mini reds. This dude, just <laughs> casually scrolling, there's a Griffey one of 10. So I pulled out a couple of times to keep for myself. I don't blame you. One of 25, gold, one of 50. Ooh, boy. One of five. That is a monster. I have like 10 of these in the run, you'll see. I kept two or three of them. That is a monster card. I kept the one with Ichiro on it, you know, the version with Ichiro and Otani, the sideways one. Wait, so you have, that's the red paper, right? Yeah, that's the, uh, I think that's the Mother's Day one, I think it's called. Oh my goodness, I got a little video of that. That's, that's a 101. Totally left you a couple of good ones. I don't even know how to value that, honestly. Like, to the right person, that's a monster, monster. But look, it's like I got, this is also a very rare version of you don't see too often. Also, the camo ones, a lot of people mm. really like. Oh my And gosh, the American uh, ones. Are very... This stack. I know, I don't, I mean, I don't know where you want to value it at. Oh, do you, I don't, I don't even know what you value. I because mean, how do you look at the run? So I pulled out a couple, like I had a, like, I, I posted the run once and I had somebody offer me $8,000 for the run. Yeah. But at that point, I wasn't interested in selling, so I was like, sorry, I appreciate yeah. the offer, you know. Yeah. So real quick on this Otani step. 2019, so this is... Second year, all-star rookie. You're snagging these on eBay. On eBay, in, during the injury. During the injury. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think you paid for these six? Um, it's not even relevant now, because yeah. this is a different player. 
Um, I think that with 101, I paid the most I paid for anything, and that was 300. So everything was down from there, basically. I think the blue paper and the red paper, I paid maybe 100 for. I think I paid, I think I paid 80 for that one. You know, people don't like the the, the wave ones, the wave yeah, refractor right. so into them. I want straight um, gold. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I paid 300 for the Otani um, one of that. You know, the one, a version, mm -hmm. SP yeah. version with Otani. Yeah. I think the other one I paid the most for the red version of the Otani. And then I also paid like 150 or 180 for the orange. So we're looking at runs of Griffey. We're looking at runs of Freddie Freeman. We're looking at runs of Bryce Harper and Goldschmidt. You know, he's got lots of cards from single players, but he's picking all the best of the best right now in Major League Baseball. So it's hard to complain about seeing these long runs of different players. I might want to so keep that one of my nice. favorite ones right there. I might oh, it's Independence Day, man. Yeah. That's an amazing card. Yeah, the color on it, the color matches. These just, are all one of us, nine yeah, luck. Yeah. Somebody's here. Oh, hey, Marcel, welcome. Hey, what's up? Come Good on in. Here. Thank you, nice to meet you. Welcome to the party. Yeah, I'm, I'm running a little late here. How you feel, man? I tried to kill me last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's good to have Marcel back. You were in an ambulance, you were in an emergency room, yeah. and you made it back to the hotel, and here you are. I know, it's good to be back, man. It doesn't matter what happens, can't stop Marcel. <laughs> you almost rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> Did I? <laughs> All right, so this is this is like tailor made for you. All Yakov's personal stuffs over here, so you can go salivate, wipe your jewel off after you look at everything. Okay. <laughs> and everything you can already see, we've been going through boxes for the last few hours. Stuff that we're thinking about working on a deal together on, but relics, autos, refractors, refractors, mostly baseball. All right? one yeah. of, one of ten, one of five, one of one, one of twenty. That's his style. Oh, okay. So the, so the first card. First card in the print run. Yeah, exactly. That is so cool. You came up with that? Have yeah. You to do it, that just, yeah. I wanted something unique to hunt for, something that's more interesting to go after, and that wasn't kind of so popular 11 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason we overpay for one of us is because of Yago. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. I could be the whole reason. I could have started the whole uh, the whole craze. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, so dig around, man. Go look and find some stuff, and then we can reconvene later. I got to show you this. So. He's got this box and they're all Adley Rushman. So these are all Adley Rushman. They're all Adley Rushman rookies. And for those of you that are watching, you know, the Orioles just got purchased. They've got a lot of money on their hands. They had a great team last year. They've got Gunner on there. They've got Lawlar coming up. Adley is the backbone of that team, and he's an Orioles collector. I mean, he's going to do so good. I love Adley. These cards are so awesome. This card, so there was a product that was released way back in the day, and you would get a few, um, I think these are red or orange parallels, numbered to 245, randomly with the set. Um, he ended up getting one of these cards way back in the day for nothing. This is a monster card. This is one of Freddy's most sought after rookie cards. It goes for hundreds and hundreds of dollars now. Uh, Freddy's on a, you know, one track road to the Hall of Fame. And this is a really special card. Look how centered it is. I love this card. You know, I'm a Dodger fan. I love this card. So many low numbered cards, autographs, Hall of Famers, some of the best rookie cards that anybody would want to own. Like, you can't beat it. This is like A plus, A grade. Careful, A, egg. Uh, it's it's A, man. Do you know the next letter after A? <laughs> uh, well, I was looking this morning. And I said, man, I Marcel needs to be here for this one. This is tailor made for Marcel. Everything that you would possibly want to see is here. So I can honestly say this is the best modern, especially modern baseball collection that I've ever seen. That's awesome. That makes me feel really good to hear that. I mean. Yeah. Just the thought and the like, the dedication to spend the last ten years scraping eBay to get every one of <laughs> that in itself should be rewarded. Can you imagine doing? No, that? hats off. It's yeah. just yeah, what a thing. But we're at that point now where it's like, I, I I don't even know what to say. You know, really, I would I would sit there and I would say we could come up with a number, but there's so much that we can't comp. It's like I'm just guessing because it's so unique. Yeah. What is it you want out of the deal? So I think the end game is to end up with one to four super premium cards 
Jackie Robinson, Leaf rookie, uh, 51 Bowman Mantle rookie, uh, 51 Mays rookie, and the 54 Aaron are probably my top four cards that I'd like to kind of start by landing those. I don't know where this will end up, you know, as far as dollar wise, but those will be my first four picks. And as far as how to work it with you guys, you know, definitely open, but I think some type of commission and some type of, you know, deal we can work out that way that because who knows where some of these cards will end up you know there might be a few guys who really pc some of this stuff and some of the pretty rare versions of the cards and they're the first print and you know people i think do find that unique now they didn't find it as unique when i started collecting in 2013 yeah. it wasn't a thing um and so i think you might have a few really crazy collectors come out of the woodworks for some of the whatnot and you know pay some premium which you know a high premium that maybe you wouldn't get somewhere else and so i think the fairest way is to work a commission kind of deal for you guys oh consignment you know i i'm trying to stay away from consignment because of just the the pressure you feel to sell things really quick the accountability you constantly have to have with the the owner of the cards but i i do feel like yakov has a collection that might be worth kind of diving back into consignment again so you wouldn't take a check for everything right now? For 120, we can do a check. <laughs> <laughs> 120? He's already talked about the fees and everything. He knows we got to pay fees. So in past consignments that we've done, we, we always throw out a number. We throw out a number that we think gives us enough flexibility to make, make some money. And I'm going to throw out, I'm going to throw out 70,000 bucks for Yakov because I think that's very aggressive. It rewards him for his collection. And a lot of times with these collections, we get we get people that we've done deals with come back and say, you know what, I wish I would have just taken that offer. <laughs> would you take a check for 70,000 for everything right now? Wow, um, I'd have to probably do a little bit of number crunching. So what you're saying is you you think in a peak value is gonna be reached if we can promote this and do like a whatnot, an, a great whatnot, couple events, three or four events, yeah. sell it off to find the right collectors and, and we'd run this on a commission consignment. Yeah, I think that would be hopefully the best way to do it i mean i'm i'm new to the whatnot world you know but i've seen some of what you guys have hosted and they look great and uh you guys got a good following so i think you'll be able to bring some eyeballs and some collectors there and uh, yeah well promoted um i think it will be a good event so with consignments the biggest thing that i have to get past is the work doesn't change right the work does not change for the consignment i still have to list i still have to organize i still have to ship i still have to maintain the communication like you do when you have your own collections to sell and so you have to make sure that the the, the number you're making the percentage you're making rewards you for the work you would have been putting in anyway if you owned it i'm not opposed to that it is not the norm right we don't like to always work on consignment um because we're not an auction house, right? We like to acquire collections, but yours is so unique and so fascinating to me that I, I'm willing to pursue it. I mean, we should talk about it, but I, it sounds intriguing, right? No, I'm okay with it, but you sure Ty will give you 70K right now. At this point, I wasn't sure if Marcel just really wanted the collection or if he just wanted to see me write that check. Yeah, I mean, look, 70K is a great number and uh, in reality, I don't think it's unfair, but I think in the end of the day, I would like to really see where the market takes it and where we can all make our money, yeah. you know. Um, that's the bottom line. Well, maybe the compromise is uh, you allow us to buy a few cards. We've, uh, yeah, I've set aside a couple cards, you set aside a couple cards. Yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, and then we can figure out the details and we can consign the rest for you. Let's have some fun. I'm already starting to get the, the brain waves going here of maybe doing like an all day Yakov event where we schedule across a Saturday and we just sell through cards nonstop, high end cards follow us in the link below the upper right hand corner you're going to want to be a part of the upcoming whatnot auction this is just another one of the incredible boxes he has i just started i pulled out a couple of really cool cards this is a paul goldschmidt rookie it's a it's an orange it's numbered to 25. uh super card i actually had the red of this i think they're numbered to five when paul uh, first came out and I sold it, wish I would have held it like he did. Super nice card. And then I pulled out this Freddie Freeman here. Uh, oh, it's numbered one of 25. <laughs> what a coincidence. But yeah, Freddie Freeman uh, playing for the Dodgers this year. Otani probably right behind him. Great player, great card. I mean, these cards are just right up my alley. It's so much fun. It's just so much fun. So Yako, what a cool dude, right? I know, super cool, man. And, and he's from the tribe. 
Uh, so, and for those of you that don't know that, you know, he's Jewish, I'm Jewish, so right there, we're going to be in You get a deeper connection. Deeper normal. connection, but it's going to be some hard negotiating in there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, Marcel and Jakob over there negotiating on some cards. Actually, he put a large stack together, and uh, I'm getting ready to do the same with me. I probably have about 10 cards that I'm going to negotiate on. We're going to see if we can work on a deal for some. Most of this is going to go to whatnot. Here's a good stack of cards that we're both going to walk away with today. I really only want these three. I, I made a little stack here of other cards that I'd love to have. Uh, okay. I want you to go ahead and just take the ones you don't want to sell today out, right? Uh, but maybe you'd consider selling at least these three. That's the Adrian Beltre. It's a one of ten and greatest third baseman of all time. <laughs> I don't know, Aaron Nato. <laughs> and then we got an Adrian Beltre, Jumbo Patch Museum Collection. Very nice one. So, uh, and then we got another one of those uh, museum uh, jumbos, but doesn't have the patch. Yeah, it's so, a napkin. So yeah, I mean, those are the three I really want. If you okay. want to take a look at these stacks and just say, hey, I'd be willing to sell this to you, I'd love that. Uh, and if not, uh, we're good. You know, let's take it all to the show. I want to make you as much money as we can. Yakov is being very thorough and checking on these cards. I mean, he didn't build a collection like this by not paying close attention. And on the flip side, we have to be equally as thorough, not just with the cards that we're buying, but also with the intricacies of a large consignment. But man, this is fun. Some of these are my cards that I set aside. You already, okay, that was quick. <laughs> Which one did you pull out? Let me see. Oh, uh, got it. I got to keep them good at the market. All right. Sorry. All right. <laughs> so he said no to the Devontae Adams, the Freddie Freeman gold Bowman from and the Trout and Griffey one of tens. You yeah. can bid on them if you want. <laughs> yeah, we both have a couple stacks. You want to? I'm basically almost at 14, and we agreed on one of these cards. I was just going to basically pay in full comp because I really want it ready um, but uh, yeah so what do you think uh, my friend here um, on 1385 on this stack what's what's the best that you'd be willing to do mm, 1100 does that sound reasonable um, 1100 that's cool man 1100 yeah plus the three plus the three 14 cool. to you yeah. excellent enjoy appreciate it man uh, okay so we have a Mine's going to be a little bit larger. These are the three that I'm really curious about. You got your Griffey Red, your Griff Griffey Red Auto, and your Griffey One of Ten. You did, you weren't really yeah. sure if you'd sell them to me. What do you think? I didn't realize this one was so, so expensive. Such a big card, yeah. Um, I would love to just get those into the whatnot for like a real Griffey nut. I'm sure you're a Griffey nut. But I think an, another Griffey nut might pay a little bit more than this Griffey nut over here. <laughs> you know? Right. You know what? It's fine. <laughs> so I think those will, will hold for the whatnot. So That's fair. wait and see these in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Okay. Um, all right. So. Well, so let's pull the Bowman out and the Soto because we've already kind of talked about those. We were right. at about 3000 in value for that. We pulled that out. What, what's the best you can do on that? Because you got a couple really, really nice ones over here, and I think some of the refractors are super nice. Uh, how do you feel about 25? 25? Um, what is that? What does that give me at three? How about 2350? All right. Done deal. Done. Awesome. That was a very un. Exciting negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no way. Sorry, I'm just being, no. you know, not trying to. Can, can we do it again? And, and can we, no. Let's do it again and negotiate more. <laughs> no, not going down any further. <laughs> so, what do you want to go up? <laughs> Yakov, thank you so much, man. Yes, thank you. It was uh, awesome meeting you guys. It was super fun to go through the cards. Oh, and man. So nerd fun. out with a bunch of hardcore collectors, too. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys soon again and we'll do the whatnot deal and yeah. hopefully have a great time doing that. So really appreciate you guys making the trip out to see me Thank and you. hooking up my stuff. Thank really you, awesome. He called, he called you a collector, not a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> We're all collectors and nerds around here. That's right. <laughs> Thanks right, guys. guys. Right. Good to meet you. You got some good cards. So did I. Man, you killed it, man. Like I, I wanted to leave the really, really good stuff for the show. I was afraid to, <laughs> and I didn't think he'd say yes, but. You, you got some Freddie Freeman, some Heat, and you know, those yeah. are some good cards. I don't think they'll make, it, they'll make it home. I actually don't think he'll make it home. 
<laughs> I don't know what that means. We really did get some good cards. Yakov was nice enough to negotiate a few cards, and uh, he did pull some fire out for the whatnot. He did. But we, we did get to walk away with some good cards. I think that because of the uniqueness of the collection, it's hard to value where some of these you know low-run population cards, which are numbered one of, might end up. So I'm open to however you know we want to get it done. I think for the most part, and I want my cards to go to people who you know are interested in having them for their personal collections. And I'm excited to you know hopefully see some people get some stuff they'll value into their personal collection from my personal collection. Man, what a blast it was hanging out with Yaakov and checking out his insane collection. As you saw, we actually took 1,600 cards with us for consignment, and we're making them all available to you. And we're doing it in two ways. About 1,200 or so items are already available in the Chasing Cardboard Marketplace. You can find the link below, and you can actually go sell your own cards there as well. The other 400, 400 of the top cards from his collection are going straight to whatnot, and they're being made exclusively to you. All one of cards, incredible Hall of Famers, top players, autographs, rare refractors, you name it, it's all available on Whatnot. You're going to find a link below with a schedule as well. In fact, this upcoming weekend, you're going to find two really big auctions available on Friday night and Saturday night where we auction off some insane stuff for you. We can't wait to see you there. We can't wait for you to take some of Yaakov's collection and uh, we'll see you around. Keep chasing. <laughs>